All right, today we're going to go over fontanel suture and sutures in all the bones of the skulls. We'll start first with the fontanels. So if you look on the fetal skull, you'll notice that there are soft spots. You can probably see them on babies' heads when you've held a baby. Um, those are places where bone has not filled in and it's still just connective tissue. And that allows for growth and expansion of the skull and the brain. And it also makes it a whole lot easier on the mama when she delivers a baby because she doesn't have to deliver this big head that's already sealed up. There's still room for growth. Um, naming the fontanelles is real simple. You can do two ways. You can do the positional terms, which I like just because it's, you know your positional terms. So like this one, it's the anterior fontanelle. It's the one in front, okay? That makes sense. You could also call this the frontal fontanelle uh, based on this being the frontal bone. Then you have, in the back, you have what would be your posterior fontanelle. Um, that one you can also call your occipital fontanelle because that's related to this occipital bone. Then on the sides, both in the right and left sides, uh, you have the anterolateral, antero being anterior or front, lateral to the side, fontanelles. Um, and another name that you uh, can call those is your sphenoid fontanelles because this is the a greater wing of the sphenoid bone coming out on each side here. And then in the back you have the posterolateral or posterior and to the side fontanelles. And those are also named the mastoid fontanelles because they're by this uh, mastoid process, which you can see better on this uh, adult skull, that's that big mastoid process. And so they're located right by that, so that's how they get that name. So you have frontal or anterior posterior or occipital, can you see that one? Mm -hmm. And then anterolateral, right and left anterolateral or right and left sphenoid, and posterolateral or uh, mastoid fontanelles. So pick your name. All right, so that's the fontanelles. Then you have these sutures. So when these fontanelles um, start filling in and hardening with bone instead of this uh, connective tissue, and all of these joints join up between the bones, you get what are known as suture lines. So sutures are immovable joints, so this cannot expand anymore. So once those sutures seal up, there's no more growth and expansion here. The sutures are named very simply by, a lot of them are just by the planes of cut. So if you cut this way down this line, that's going to be a frontal or coronal suture, or, or a frontal or a coronal plane, which makes this the coronal or frontal suture. Um, actually, it's not frontal, it's just coronal suture. Don't say frontal on that one. Then if you do this plane right here, that is a sagittal section. So that's your sagittal suture that divides the two parietal bones. And notice it's also connecting to the uh, frontal bone here and the occipital bone in the back. So it's between the occipital frontal and then it's in between the parietal bones here. Um, then you have the lambdoidal suture which outlines your uh, occipital bone and goes all the way down underneath here. And then on the side here, you have your squamous, uh, squamosal suture that outlines the temporal bone. And you've probably heard the term squamous before when we were talking about epithelium. Squamous are those thin, flat cells. And if you look at the squamous bone all by itself, this is just a real thin, thin sheet of bone right here. And so that's kind of how it got its name. But remember, these are immovable joints, so once they seal up, uh, there's not going to be any more growth and expansion in the brain. All right, so let's go ahead and start talking about the different bones in the skull. You've got the cranial bones that make up a vault that holds the brain inside of here. Um, and so we're going to start with those cranial bones first. But remember, that's going to have a brain sitting right down in there. So if you just start with a basic outline of the bones, you've got eight cranial bones. Um, You've got the frontal bone here, which you should know from your positional terms. And then you have two parietal bones, a right, right and left parietal bone. And always name the bones right and left if there are two. If there's only one, of course, you don't have to say right and left. So you've got frontal, then left and right parietal bone. And then in the back here, and remember going all the way down underneath here, that's going to be your occipital bone. Of course, that's the occipital region of your head. Then you have the two temporal bones on each side that are outlined by that squamous suture, one there and there, so that's your right and left temporal bones. And this little piece coming out right here, this zygomatic process is part of the temporal bone. And then you have 
the sphenoidal bone and the ethmoid bone. And you see those better if you look inside, if you just take the lid off here and look inside on the floor of the cranial vault here. Um, if you look at that, you can notice that there are three shelves. It looks like three little levels there. So imagine sitting your brain down in there and there's three different levels. Well, this first level right here, um, the ethmoid, ethmoid bone sticks up out of that. Um, think of the ethmoid bone as just, it's like a box. And what you're seeing is the top of the box right here. So it's just like a little rectangular box that just slips right down in, uh, right behind your nose. And so you're just seeing the top of it sticking out here. You can see um, a little piece sticking out inside the nasal cavity there too. And we'll name all those in just a minute. But basically you just got a little rectangular box that you've slid down in there. And so that's sitting on that floor of the first shelf. The second floor, or the second shelf here, is made up of the sphenoid bone. And if you look at the pictures in your book, the sphenoid bone looks like a bat. I wish I had the models here, but I don't. But anyway, it, it looks like a bat, and you just set it right down in there. And so the bat wings are these big processes right here, um, and we'll start naming those in a minute. But they make up most of the floor of this second shelf. You have some smaller wings up here on the sphenoid bone that make up the posterior part of the first shelf. But that's your sphenoidal bone uh, outlined right there. And then notice it comes out on the outsides here, so you can see it coming up on the outside of the skull. These would be the greater wings of the sphenoid, and we'll, we'll name these in just a second. But just imagine a bat bone just kind of slid down right in there, and that makes up that second shelf. And then of course you have the third uh, level here, and that's all made up of your occipital bone. So all of that floor is just the occipital bone that kind of wraps around and goes underneath. All right, so those are your eight cranial bones. Now, what we need to do is name all the features of the bone that you need to know. Um, we'll start with the frontal bone. The first thing you need to know is this little border right here, this edge, is called the supraorbital margin. Now, if you'll just look at the name, supra meaning superior, orbital meaning that cavity right there, and margin being an edge. So there's your supraorbital margin, just that edge that makes the uh, eyebrow on you. We'll talk about this later when we talk about male versus female models or skeletons, um, that this is going to be sharper and more defined in a female. It'll be more blunt in a male. That's why males tend to have bigger, bushier eyebrows. Um, but that's the supraorbital margin, and it has a little nick in it there that we call the supraorbital notch, which uh, vessels and nerves run through notches and holes. So you're going to see all kinds of notches and holes in here, uh, but that's usually what it is. So those are the only thing you, uh, well no, you need to know the frontal sinuses. A sinus is a cavity within a bone. So that means there's going to be some space within this bone. So if you just take this off and look at the frontal bone, right in here, and you can't see it on this uh, new skull, but the uh, real human skulls show there's a space that, that is just hollowed out in there. And that, that is the frontal sinus. So a cavity, excuse me, I'll get, get it right. A sinus is a cavity within a bone. I'm getting there. It's a little after lunch. All right, so those are the features of the frontal bone that you need to know. Then 